Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to investigate a very intuitive yet powerful test that can allow you to test for any linear restriction on regression parameters. It is called the world test, and today we'll investigate one of the most commonly utilized examples and applications of world test to see whether a production function that explains the differences in countries' GDP has decreasing constant or increasing returns to scale. Without further ado, here we have got data on 180 countries as of 2019 on their real GDP in million of constant US dollars, their population in million people, and the capital stock valued at million US dollars in constant prices as well. And we'll be using the Cobb-Douglas production function over here that tries to explain the differences in GDP of country I, Y, I, using this product function, this multiplicative function that multiplies the technological constant or total factor productivity A by the product of labor endowment L, I, and capital endowment K, I, raised to the powers of alpha and beta. And alpha and beta here, again, can be interpretable as elasticities of output on the respective factors of production. Here, the two most important factors of production we consider are labor, in terms of population, and capital, in terms of the dollar value of the capital stock. And to estimate this particular production function using an OLS multiple regression, we just take natural logarithms from both sides and get uh, this a very, very neat expression. We break down this product into a sum, and the logarithmic function brings these powers, alpha and beta, in front of the logarithms, so we can estimate them as linear regression coefficients. And uh, to estimate the world test, you need to know the covariance matrix between your estimators, not only knowing their standard errors, but also how correlated the errors in estimators are. So we will not use the usual Linest or Data Analyst tab, but rather we would estimate the regression model using matrix multiplication and build it from scratch. And we have already got a video on how to do that where I delve into it in greater detail, so please check this out if you're interested in this particular issue. However, now we'll just quickly estimate our regression model and the covariance matrix using matrix multiplication and proceed to the Walt test. So first of all, we need to calculate the natural logarithms of our dependent variable, our independent variables, population, capital, stock, as well as input the array of ones for the constants, and enforce these formulas, as well as drag the constant column across the whole sample of 180 countries we have. And then we can use this matrix multiplication formula to retrieve parameters, our estimators. So first we do an inverse matrix of the product of transposed matrix of independent variables, including the constant. Then we multiply it on the right by a non-transposed matrix, which is the same uh, matrix X. And then having calculated the inverse, we have to multiply it on the right again by the transposed matrix of X. And we can just copy this for additional efficiency. And then we can multiply it on the right again by a column vector of our dependent variable y. And finally, we can enforce this formula using shift control enter as it multiplies a bunch of matrices and retrieve coefficient values that we seek. And again, we can see that our alpha and beta positive, meaning that output reacts positively to an increase in factor loadings, which is quite intuitive. However, the elasticity of output on capital is quite a bit higher, roughly four times as high as the elasticity on labor. And we'll be able to check this particular presumption, whether this is exactly four times higher than that, using a wall test. But without getting too far ahead of ourselves, to estimate the covariance matrix that we'll use 
both for conventional and standard error calculations and the wall test, we need to know what is the number of the degrees of freedom in our model. And the number of the degrees of freedom is just the sample size minus the number of linear restrictions we impose on our data. And the number of linear restrictions we impose is just the number of our coefficients, the number of our uh, regression parameters. So we arrive at 177 as our number of the degrees of freedom. Then we need to use that to calculate the standard error of our regression model, which is the standard error of our production, basically is the standard deviation of the uh, residual. So we have to calculate the predicted values of the logarithm of real GDP for all of our sample countries. So to do that, we can easily just use a matrix multiplication again, multiplying all the independent variables, a row vector of those, onto a column vector of regression parameters, locking that as parameters do not change, and not locking this as variables do change across observations, and enforcing it using shift control enter again, and double clicking it all the way down. And then our residuals would be the differences between observed values of real uh, GDP and the predicted values, and then, quite easily, our standard error can be calculated as a squared sum of those error terms divided by the degrees of freedom in the model over here. To get the standard error and not the variance, we can just calculate the square root over here. We can see that our standard error is 0 0.39, which is by how much, on average, our model uh, deviates from the actual value of logarithm of real GDP. However, it is instrumental in calculating the covariance matrix of our estimators. So we can translate this formula in the language of Excel. So first of all, we need to refer to the standard error squared, which is the variance of the error term, and multiply it by an inverse matrix, M inverse, of a matrix multiplication result of a transposed matrix of independent variables X, including the constant, as well as the non-transposed matrix of independent variables, including the constant. And we close all the parentheses we need, enforce this formula using shift control enter and get our covariance matrix over here. And the diagonal of this matrix refers to variances of individual estimators of our coefficients or parameters, however you might call them. So the square root of the diagonal elements would correspond to the standard error we all know and love and use to do our t-tests on individual coefficients. So just as a reminder, we can calculate the square roots, respectively for the top left element, for the very middle element, and for the bottom right element to get standard errors of the constant term of alpha and beta. And then t-stats can be calculated as ratios between the coefficients and the respective standard errors, and p-values can be retrieved using a two-tailed t-distribution, using the absolute values of t-stats we just calculated, and the degrees of freedom over here. And finally, the covariance matrix can actually be used to test any linear restriction on coefficients. What you probably do not think of too much is that the usual t-test is basically a test of whether the value of your coefficient is statistically different from zero. In the similar fashion, we can test for any linear combinations of coefficients to be different from zero as well. For example, one of the most common questions you can ask of a production function, for example here a production function that converts uh, factor endowments of a nation into its output, into its GDP, whether it's decreasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale, or increasing returns to scale. And quite intuitively, it all depends on the sum of elasticities, the sum of our parameters alpha and beta. If it's less than one, then this function is homogeneous of degree less than one, meaning that um, if your uh, capital and labor both double, for example, your output would less than double, it would increase, but by a factor of less than two. If it's exactly one or very close to one, then if both factors, both labor and capital double, the output would exactly double. And if the sum is greater than one, then you've got increasing returns to scale, and if factor endowments double, your output more than doubles. For example, you can double labor and capital, and your output can increase by a factor of, for example, 2.5. And we need to figure out which of these three cases we are currently at. If we just calculate the sum of alpha and beta, we would get 
1.0262, which is definitely higher than 1, just arithmetically, meaning that we have increasing returns to scale, isn't it? However, this needs to be formally tested using the wall test to figure out whether a deviation of 1 is high enough to warrant our judgment in terms of the production function being uh, increasing returns to scale. So we can formally test the null hypothesis of alpha plus beta being equal to 1, so it means our production function being constant returns, against an alternative hypothesis of this function being increasing returns to scale, or alternatively in terms of our parameters mathematically, that the sum of alpha plus beta is greater than 1. So we can use this null hypothesis, alpha plus beta minus 1 is equal to 0, and use the wall test to calculate the test statistic and the standard error of this test statistic. And then a t-test, just as here, can be used to determine the significance of the deviation of our sum from 1, or the deviation of alpha plus beta minus 1 from 0, which are equivalent. So the test statistic is just alpha plus beta minus 1, which is just this expression we have got here in terms of our coefficients, and the standard error of such an expression can be directly calculated from the covariance matrix, using not only the diagonal elements, but also all other elements that are interpretable as covariances between our estimators. So as we want to retrieve the standard error or the standard deviation in that regard of this expression, we need to calculate the square root of the variance of A plus the variance of B plus two covariances between A and B. And that's exactly the formula for a covariance of a sum of two random variables. And the regression analysis treats your estimators as random variables. They have their variances and they have their covariances between each other. And uh, this is simply the function of a covariance interpreted in terms of your regression parameters. And as minus one is just a constant, its variance is obviously zero, so you don't need to account for that in this particular estimation. So we can just calculate the square root of what we've got over here and get the standard error of 0 0.014. And then, as usual, the t-test is the test statistic over the standard error, and we've got a t-stat of 1.87 roughly, and it corresponds to a p-value uh, that we can calculate using a two-tailed t-distribution, inputting the absolute value of the t-stat, and the number of the degrees of freedom over there. And we can see that the deviation of the sum from 1 is uh, significant at 10%, meaning that we can reasonably, reasonably certainly say that our production function that we have estimated using data on 180 countries is indeed increasing returns to scale. However, these increasing returns are quite moderate, in terms of their economical significance. Another restriction on coefficients that we can test is to test this hypothesis we kind of hinted towards at the start. Is the elasticity um, of output on capital really four times greater than the elasticity on labor? Turns out wall test can come to the rescue here as well. We can test the null hypothesis of for alpha minus beta being equal to zero, and the test statistic is obviously four times alpha minus beta. And then the standard error of such um, an expression can be also calculated using just simple statistical insights. So first of all, variance of four alpha is four squared times the variance of alpha, isn't it? So four squared times the variance of alpha over here. The variance of minus beta is just the variance of beta over here, so 1 squared times the variance of beta. Again, a variance of a difference, well, you still have the variance of the second component uh, with a plus sign, that's quite a common property of uh, the variance uh, function. And then, as we've got a minus sign over here, we need to subtract 2 times 4, because we've got 4 in front of alpha here, times 1, because we've got 1 in front of beta over here, so times 1, but we could have omitted that, times the covariance between alpha and beta. And that's all we need to calculate the covariance and uh, the standard error, the standard deviation of this test statistic. And we can see that this standard error is 0 0.11 roughly, corresponding to a t-stat of 0 0.59, and that, in turn, corresponds to a p-value that, again, can be calculated using a simple two-tailed t-test, of 
meaning that the difference uh, of this expression from zero is not statistically significant. So for all intents and purposes, we can treat the factor uh, loading of beta and its elasticity to be four times greater than the elasticity of labor that is represented by alpha. And those are two ways how you can use wall test to test for any linear restrictions on the coefficients in your model. And it has applications well beyond this simple research on macroeconomics. You can use wall test in finance research, for example, to determine whether short-term debt or long-term debt affect corporate value differently. And uh, in terms of finance and economics applications, always when you want to test if several coefficients have some neat relationship between them, wall test is what you should look for. And that's all there is for wall test and its applications to Cobb Douglas production function returns to scale. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.